Central Pangasinan Electric Cooperative, Inc. v. National Labor Relations Commission and Lito Kagampan. Legal doctrine of this case. Separation pay shall be allowed only in those instances where the employee is validly dismissed for causes other than serious misconduct or those reflecting on his moral character. In this case, private respondent was found by the labor arbiter in the NLRC to have been validly dismissed for violations of company rules, and certain acts tantamount to serious misconduct. Separation pay should not be awarded. Facts of the case Private respondent Lito Kagampan was the acting power use coordinator of petitioner Central Pangasinan Electric Cooperative, Inc. On November 7, 1998, Kagampan received a check amounting to P100,831 from Aurora B. Bonifacio as partial payment for the installation of a transformer in her building and expansion of a three-phase line. In a letter, Bonifacio informed CENPELCO's general manager Salvador de Guzman of the said transaction and that Kagampan did not issue a receipt for the partial payment made. She also requested the immediate installation of the transformer. Thereafter, Kagampan was directed to explain in writing why he should not be disciplined or dismissed for the unauthorized acceptance of payments for new electrical connections. Upon investigation, it appeared that Kagampan knowingly entered into an unauthorized contract for the installation of a transformer, and that he was not authorized to accept payment. Hence, Kagampan was found guilty of violating CENPELCO's Code of Ethics and Discipline, namely 1. Unauthorized acceptance of payments for new connection. 2. Dishonest or unauthorized activity whether for personal gain or not. And 3 defrauding others by using the name of the company. He was dismissed from service. Kagampan filed a complaint for illegal dismissal, praying for payment of backwages and damages, and reinstatement. The labor arbiter found that Kagampan used his position as a CENPELCO employee to enter into a contract with Bonifacio for the purchase of materials and hiring of labor force necessary for the installation of a transformer, in violation of company rules. The labor arbiter dismissed the complaint for lack of merit but ordered CENPELCO to pay Kagampan separation pay. Both parties appealed to the NLRC. The NLRC affirmed the labor arbiter's decision. Private respondents' motion for reconsideration was denied. CENPELCO sought reconsideration of the award of separation pay but was also denied. Petitioner filed a petition for certiorari with the Court of Appeals which dismissed the petition for lack of merit. Petitioner moved for reconsideration but was denied. Issue of the case Whether or not the award of separation pay to private respondent is proper. Ruling of the Supreme Court Separation pay should not be awarded. Section 7 Rule I, Book 6 of the Omnibus Rules Implementing the Labor Code provides that when the employee is dismissed for any of the just causes under Article 28,213 of the Labor Code, he shall not be entitled to termination pay without prejudice to applicable collective bargaining agreement or voluntary employer policy or practice. Separation pay shall be allowed only in those instances where the employee is validly dismissed for causes other than serious misconduct or those reflecting on his moral character. Separation pay in such case is granted to stand as a measure of social justice. If the cause for the termination of employment cannot be considered as one of mere inefficiency or incompetence but an act that constitutes an utter disregard for the interest of the employer or a palpable breach of trust in him, the grant by the court of separation benefits is hardly justifiable. In this case, Private respondent was found by the labor arbiter and the NLRC to have been validly dismissed for violations of company rules, and certain acts tantamount to serious misconduct. Such findings, if supported by substantial evidence, are accorded respect and even finality by this court. Although long years of service might generally be considered for the award of separation benefits or some form of financial assistance to mitigate the effects of termination, this case is not the appropriate instance for generosity under the Labor Code nor under our prior decisions.
The fact that private respondent served petitioner for more than 20 years with no negative record prior to his dismissal, in our view of this case, does not call for such award of benefits, since his violation reflects a regrettable lack of loyalty and worse, betrayal of the company. If an employee's length of service is to be regarded as a justification for moderating the penalty of dismissal, such gesture will actually become a prize for disloyalty, distorting the meaning of social justice and undermining the efforts of labor to cleanse its ranks of undesirables. Subscribe for more reviewers. Central